All right. Can you all hear me okay? Cool. Technology works. Yay. <laughs> Just needed to warm up a little bit to uh, laptops being attached all the time. So um, as it was already mentioned, I will be talking a little bit about Kata containers. I will mention the uh, confidential containers project, but in light of the, the previous presentation, I will not go into details on that. Also, we will see how uh, time allows. I got a lot of slides. Um, so I will not talk much about myself. Everything was mostly mentioned. Um, about me, but you find my email address. I'm also available on LinkedIn and many other um, social media platforms if you have any questions or you would like to have a follow-up conversation about Kata containers um, or, well, any other open infra projects as well. Um, so let's dive in. What is Kata containers? Um, it is an open source project that is an OCI compatible runtime. And I myself like to refer to Kata containers as an evolution path for both virtual machines as well as containers. Um, and you saw in the previous presentation as well that it is a technology that uses both virtual machines and containers when it comes to uh, spinning up something that from the outside world looks like a container. So when it comes to why would anyone do that, um, still in today's um, cloud environments, there are workloads where you just need more proper isolation um, than namespaces. So what happens a lot of the times is um, environments like you can think about telecommunication as a prime example, um, where uh, very often, even, even if operators are using containers, the containers land in, uh, for lack of anything else, in traditional virtual machines, which gives a lot of overhead. However, it does give that uh, nice isolation uh, from the host kernel um, between containers. Now, what Kata Containers does is it reduces that hypervisor layer and strips down the virtual machine for you and puts the container still inside the virtual machine, but it is much more lightweight than traditional uh, virtualization solutions. Who needs a floppy disk anymore, right? So uh, the highlights of the project is beyond the fact that it's open source, is that it seamlessly integrates with Kubernetes, Docker, and other technologies. It also runs on multiple hardware architectures, as well as supports multiple hypervisors. So QMU is not the only hypervisor that Kata Container supports. However, I believe that one is the most uh, developed when it comes to the project. Um, so I talked about uh, the evolution path. What I meant by that is the diagram shows very nicely how um, virtual machines and containers uh, compare in terms of um, isolation and security uh, versus speed. So um, the virtual machines are um, on the top left corner of the diagram on the left uh, because they are providing really good isolation, but they are not really fast. And when it comes to containers, now one thing that traditional containers are not really good at is actually containing. So uh, you could imagine that I could have a fishnet as opposed to a shipping container uh, on the bottom of that diagram. And that's where Kata Containers comes in and grabs the isolation capability from virtual machines and the speed from containers and puts that into one package for you. Um, there is some information in terms of how the project evolved on the right side. Um, currently the project is in the um, 3.0 um, main release and 4.0 will be coming out this year. Um, and you can see that it already has a diverse user base and um, the project is also working with the uh, confidential containers project that I will mention a little bit later in the slides. 
I also um, have a slide about the most active, not all, but the most active contributing organizations. Uh, so you can see that it is a very diverse community in the sense that there are hardware as well as software vendor companies uh, who are participating in the project as well as um, large service providers and companies from all around the globe. So the project has all kinds of diversity um, that contributes to uh, the sustainability of the project. Um, a little closer view on the technology side, how this works. Uh, I assume I will not have to talk about traditional containers much um, to, to people in the room. However, I will ask one question uh, just to see if you're paying attention. Who can spot the one weird glitch on the diagram? Any hands? Yeah, there's the, the hardware virtualization for some reason, it's mirrored. Don't ask me why. I have to admit I did not make this diagram myself, <laughs> but I'm glad that you all are paying attention. So um, you can see the, the little uh, worm thing um, on the diagram, which is the, uh, that fishnet example the little worm can get through. And uh, once, if your host is compromised uh, and your host kernel is compromised, then, uh, then um, there is access to all containers uh, that are running on that kernel because the namespace um, isolation is not that bulletproof. And you can see how um, on the hardware uh, resources layer, um, how the hardware pieces are sharing uh, or how the processes are running uh, and, and sharing the, the same hardware. Now on the right side, you can see um, that it's one thing that you have the advantage of isolation and everything that, that virtual machines provide you, but it also means that you can have the choice of a different kernel. Uh, for, the, for your containers than what the host kernel is, which is sometimes also a very appealing feature just beyond the fact that it's, uh, if the host kernel is compromised, the, uh, the intruder still has uh, ways to go to get into each and every container on that host. Now the seamless integration part, uh, what you can see on, on this slide really is that there isn't much difference between the top and the bottom uh, diagram, um, except that little VM box and the guest kernel on the, uh, the right-hand side. But Kata Containers uh, runs seamlessly with all um, major platforms, Kubernetes, Docker, uh, or OpenStack. So where you are currently using uh, a container solution, you are most probably will be able to use Kata containers just the same way as you're running containers today. Uh, from Kubernetes perspective, uh, you can see how Kata containers fits into where uh, Run C is, and you can use different uh, virtual machine options uh, like QMU or Firecracker um, in terms of hypervisors that are supported. And it was discussed before how um, Kata containers spins up the containers in the, uh, the Kubernetes pods. Uh, so you can see the, the mapping here too. Now what's even more exciting, I think, is um, like I mentioned the telecom industry at the beginning. Um, so what they have most most often is a multi-tenant environment and they really want all those tenants to be completely separated and isolated from each other. So with standard traditional containers, what you will need to do is run um, your pods on different nodes, the ones that you want to isolate. Um, so you will need more host machines. Um, with traditional containers to make sure that you have the full isolation for your tenants. If you're using Kata containers, you can see on the right-hand side that you can have the isolation within one node. So you can see how the pods and containers um, are mapping to Kata virtual machines on the right-hand side. And um, you can find more information about multi-tenancy in Kubernetes with Kata containers on the, uh, in the Kubernetes documentation that I linked on the bottom of the slide as well. So um, 
the feature slide um, intends to mention that Kata Container supports uh, technologies in all the key areas um, that cloud platforms are giving to you in networking storage um, and uh, memory space. Uh, one thing that I missed to add to the slide is that Kata Containers is also, the community has been looking into hardware acceleration, like adding uh, GP support. Um, you saw it on the slides before that we have NVIDIA um, contributing to the project as well. But other than that, things like SRIOV, DPDK, uh, Vertio uh, IO file system, all the things that you usually use with, with containers and want to have in a secure but high performance environment are supported by Kata containers. The very latest release currently is 3.3.0. However, I think Probably as I speak, the community uh, is cutting 3.4.0. Um, the, uh, the plan is to have minor releases coming out roughly on a monthly basis. And as I mentioned, uh, the community is planning a bigger 4.0 release for this year. Um, one thing to, uh, to mention is that the original Kata runtime was written in uh, Golang and the community has been working on implementing the runtime in Rust. Um, so a uh, newer version and more complete version of that runtime will be coming out with 4.0, as well as um, a closer integration with the Confidential Containers project will also be coming out in 4.0. Um, I mentioned already that you can run Kata containers just about anywhere. Um, so that means that uh, major Linux distributions uh, do have packages for Kata containers. You can, you can find Kata there. Um, you also have the option, of course, to uh, deploy, to go to GitHub and get the source code and deploy it from there. Um, Kata containers is running in private or public cloud environments as well. You can see all the major ones, AWS, GC, Microsoft Azure on the slide. And I mentioned before that Kata containers is also running on top of OpenStack. Uh, Dexhost is one of the uh, OpenStack cloud pro provider examples, um, as well as Kata is supporting a very diverse um, hardware platform environment. Uh, confidential containers, I will not go into details much on this one. Um, if you're interested in the nitty gritties of how confidential computing and, and confidential containers work, please check out the, the presentation that was given before mine at the event. I'm not uh, an expert yet on, on confidential computing. Um, however, the confidential containers project um, was created by um, a group uh, within the, uh, the Kata Containers Project. Uh, COCO, as we usually call the Confidential Containers Project, is a sandbox project in the Cloud uh, Native Computing Foundation ecosystem. Um, so the idea is to use the confidential computing uh, principles and practices and bring that into a uh, containerized Kubernetes-based environment. And that's what COCO um, is um, set as a goal um, in the CNCF ecosystem. Um, COCO is using, as it was mentioned before, the trusted, trusted execution environment um, concept to, uh, to deliver on, uh, on their goal. And COCO is uh, closely um, integrated with Kata containers. Uh, you can see um, a high level architecture diagram in terms of uh, how the Kata runtime um, and pieces are um, being integrated and used uh, with the confidential computing uh, context and for the COCO project. Again, I'm not an expert on this one, uh, but I think the, uh, the diagram shows really nicely uh, the integration points and the key components that are used um, in this context. Um, so I will jump over a little bit to Kata Containers users just to give an idea about use cases that the project is used in. Um, so N Group um, is a company um, that's a longtime uh, contributor to the project. 
they are in the financial sector in China. Um, the financial sector means that obviously security is a high priority for them. And if you think about how many people are living in China, then you can also see that whatever they need, they need it on a very, very large scale. So um, they are using Kata containers in their environment for online payment transactions. Um, the key features that they like Kata containers for is uh, network isolation, um, as well as the dedicated kernels that I mentioned before, that uh, one of the good thing beyond the isolation is that you have the choice to have different kernels for, for the containers without the need to go um, and spin up different hosts. And um, Kata containers, as we, uh, we like to refer to the project, is um, the security of virtual machines and the speed of containers. So uh, performance is um, another aspect that N Group really likes about Kata containers um, because the performance when it comes to spinning up uh, this container in the virtual machine, the performance of it is comparable to traditional containers. Uh, you can find more information about the, uh, the use case and how N Group is using Kata containers in a white paper. I added the link to the slide. Um, another company from China is Baidu. Uh, they are providing AI cloud edge computing service offerings. Um, again, um, just based on the location of the company, um, you can imagine the scale um, that they are uh, running their services in. And they are running Kata containers in both, uh, with both Kubernetes as well as OpenStack. Um, they also mention um, isolation, high performance, and the fact that it is an OCI compatible runtime as one of the key uh, features and characteristics of Kata that they really like. And there's another white paper where you can find a lot more information in terms of how they are utilizing Kata containers. The last one uh, I wanted to mention is NVIDIA. Um, it is a new use case um, that is AI and machine learning related. Um, so NVIDIA needs um, both confidential containers um, as well as, um, well, they need confidential containers um, in their use case and uh, Kata containers um, is the container runtime that is used for the implementation and um, their need is the uh, make sure that the sensitive data is encrypt encrypted, isolated and secure. Um, some of the features like the GPU support is uh, something that I mentioned before um, that is being contributed by uh, companies like NVIDIA and others as well. And um, the, uh, the fact that this is uh, the Kata containers gives you a lightweight virtual machine is something that is a priority for them. And there is a talk um, that was given by Zvonko Kaiser at the recent um, KubeCon EU event, um, I linked um, the link to the presentation where you can find out more, again, um, how they are using Coco and Kata containers uh, for their AI machine learning use case. Last but not least, Kata containers community. Um, because it's an open source project, uh, one of the most important things about the, uh, the project is the community around it. Um, Kata containers, um, is governed um, under the principles of the four opens, open source, open design, open development, and open community. What this means is that uh, the community um, prioritized open collaboration and is working under these principles to make sure that they create an environment where everyone is welcome to join um, and contribute, share ideas, feedback, uh, contribute code, test, documentation, um, and any, uh, anything else that is needed uh, for the sustainability of the project. Um, the similar, similar roles, as you can see in other um, open source projects as well, contributors, maintainers, and the, uh, the leadership body of Kata Containers is the architecture committee um, that is currently um, having uh, seven seats and uh, the nomination period for the recent election uh, just concluded today. Um, so it's a very exciting time. Check back on who are the new architecture committee members are in a bit. And if you are looking into Kata containers and are interested in contributing uh, or just checking out the project but you haven't done it yet, uh, some 
basic information, baseline information. Um, the project is under Apache V2 license. Um, all the code you can find on GitHub. And the community, when it comes to communications, they are most active on Slack. So I threw that link um, that you can also find on the katacontainers.io slash community website. And um, there are weekly architecture committee and community meetings happening on currently every Tuesday at 1500 UTC. And uh, that's what I thought for today. I don't know how we are doing on time. Okay. There's a question in front. Um, you mentioned monthly releases. Is there like a concept of an LTS for Kata containers too for people who are deploying it? Like is there a long-term support version of, mm -hmm. of Kata containers? I don't think it exists yet. Um, and when it comes to LTS, I think that's something that might be more applicable for major releases. But the, the release cycle uh, type of conversations are still ongoing within the community. So um, uh, make sure that you look out for updates in terms there are plans for, for the LTS kind of concept to be implemented. I will also let them know that there was a question about that to, uh, to put that on their minds. <laughs> Any other questions? I was almost off the hook. <laughs> Hi, I'm Krish. Um, so a question is, is there already plumbing in there to support running graphical apps using Carter containers? Like if you want to use it to like secure the desktop, for example, is that something that's uh, there's being work done in that space. Um, securing the desktop in... Like running like Firefox in a Carter container, is that something that's possible right now or no? I mean, good question. I would think that if we think about workloads, I don't think that there are limitations in terms of workloads. Uh, to run in Kata containers. So something like Firefox should be one thing that you're able to uh, to do. So um, I think so. Sweet, thank you. Thank you.